Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to From Heroes to Icons. I am Jason, and this is my channel. I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about about superheroes, specifically about uh, Marvel's Steve Ditko and Stan Lee's creation, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, uh, not too long ago, a couple of days ago now, at the time of this recording, the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer came out, and it seemed like throughout the entire internet, uh, blogs, websites, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere that you can see, it seemed like everyone was quite thrilled to see Tom Holland in his third standalone film as Spider-Man. But it seems like to me, uh, I'm not seeing what everybody else is seeing, or maybe I just see things differently. Um, I've been watching Spider-Man since uh, Mark Hamilton was playing him on, I believe, the CBS television show back in the 70s where they were rocking corduroy jackets and bell-bottom pants and um i enjoyed that show thought it was kind of odd that he only had one web shooter <laughs> and uh during that time we also had uh spider-man on electric company which it seemed like that was the spider-man that would pop up at the comic cons back in the day and um, we had the various Spider-Man cartoons. Uh, I guess Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I mean, we had the old 70s Spider-Man with uh, the classic theme song. Then we had, uh, of course, Spider-Man and his amazing friends and all of that. Then we had that Fox Spider-Man, which was super, super dope. Maybe one of the best Spider-Man cartoons ever. Almost... Uh, the Spider-Man version of Batman, the animated series. And, you know, had the MTV Spider-Man, which I thought was pretty dope. A little darker, a little more adult. That came after Tobey Maguire's uh, and Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man in 2002, I believe. And uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man, which Disney canceled. You know, Spider-Man all over the place. Then we got the current... Uh, introduction of spider-man on disney xd and all of that but we have sam raimi's spider-man which i was just ecstatic at and um got me a couple of spider-man shirts i think i've seen the movie maybe like six seven times it was ridiculous and um that you know that joy at seeing spider-man on the screen i think i only went to go see uh final fantasy the spirits within because there was a rumor that the first Spider-Man trailer was going to be in it. And it was. It was the one where the helicopter got stuck inside the spider web in between the Twin Towers. Blown away. And so, last night, I went back and I began to watch the trailers for these uh, older Spider-Man movies. Starting with the Tobey Maguire one with the Green Goblin. Just watched the one with Doc Ock. Part 2, Part 3, I didn't care for it, so I didn't even go back and look at that one. And then I looked at uh, Andrew Garfield's trailers for The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, looking at some of the scenes. And then even went back and looked at Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I've been a Spider-Man fan from the jump. Maybe four years old, I've been on Spider-Man. And he's been my favorite, I guess, pretty much up until this moment. And watching Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, I was like, yo, this Spider-Man is dope. And it seems like to me, um, and I'm specifically making this video because of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And the way it's written, the way he's acted, and um, his non- evolution i'll say of the character from civil war until now and it seems like it's a focus on the technology 
that drives and helps Spider-Man's abilities more than the character himself. Um, from Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield on the cartoons, you really get to see Spider-Man doing it by himself. And now it becomes almost uh, Team Spider-Man. I don't know if they got that from Arrow or, you know, even, uh, I forgot the dude's name, Heavy Set Cat, uh, that's in the film with him. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> Ned, Ned Leeds or whatever. He, um, which I don't know why Ned Leeds is the same age as him, which is ridiculous. But anyway, you know, he's like, oh, I can be the man in the chair. And I'm just like, Spider-Man doesn't have a team like that. And it really takes away from the heart of who Peter Parker is. How is Ned Leeds uh, as smart or maybe in some points smarter than Peter Parker? I know they wanted to fit him in into this group of children that had uh, higher intellects and stuff like that. But there's there's a certain uh, fascination about Spider-Man that his intelligence his smartness his wit is what makes him so cool the fact that almost all of his villains have something to do with science makes spider-man a different type of superhero because he can interact with them and therefore uh foil their plots and such because of his intelligence and it seems like to me um spider-man homecoming was dope it got kind of to the heart of Peter Parker without getting to the heart of Peter Parker. We have no Uncle Ben, I guess, uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Tony Stark is his Uncle Ben, which kind of sucks. And he uses um, all of the different suits. It's dope to have the different suits. And that we know in the comic book, he had various different suits. But he's almost handicapped by the suits, which... In turn, in Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, he told Peter, he was like, yo, if you're nothing without the suit, then you don't deserve it. You know what I mean? And I think uh, we should get back to more of a, you know, of the back to basics Spider-Man. A Spider-Man that understands who he is, what he needs to do. And that's never really been addressed in these new Spider-Man movies. You know, the second one, Far From Home. It was pretty dope. It kind of dragged around a little bit for me. I really, really hated that spider monkey thing because the suit was so dope and making him a goof is uh, very frustrating to me because, you know, Spider-Man was silly and he ran his mouth or whatever, but that was just because, you know, trying to control his fear of getting killed, you know, out here fighting these supervillains, but making him a goofball Making him a buffoon is um, ridiculous to me. I don't like it. And um, just the facts, man. And that's the facts of how I feel. And watching this new trailer, um, No Way Home, and I understand, you know, how they trying to tie it in to WandaVision, the multiverse of madness, Loki. And all of this other stuff. But I'm like, Spider-Man can survive without all that. He can be who he is without, he doesn't need all that extra to make him fire. You know what I'm saying? Like the world that he lives in, his supporting cast, his villains, and how he interacts with all of them is enough to make Spider-Man super dope. He, he's, he's, you know... He, he's that thing. He's amazing, spectacular, sensational. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's supposed to be. All of that. You know what I'm saying? But, um, and I know, you know, the hype, and I don't see it like that. I spoke to my boy Bob from uh, Bullseye Comics, and he was like, oh, you didn't see that? You, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of the smoke and mirrors you know, of of the hype. And then, like, the follow-through is not what it's supposed to be. Spider-Man is dope. Spider-Man is Spider-Man. Do, 
do the thing. And, uh, you know, if you build it, they will come. And if you build it right, it'll stand on its own. And, you know, we all want Craven's last hunt. We want the Sinister Six. You know what I'm saying? We want a, we want a real hardcore psychotic Green Goblin. Every, you know, but it's like all of this time, uh, Tom Holland's Peter Parker has not grown. And it's becoming a nuisance. Uh, Zendaya... Yuck. And and, and I'ma say it, this this is an opinion piece and I say yuck. We know one of the uh coolest things about Peter Parker is the nerd that gets the girl. And um it's like, you know, Peter Parker was always that dude, you know, that got bullied and this and that, and he always ended up with a dope girl. Uh nah, Zendaya is not that. You know what I mean? She brought down my dude. Denzel Washington's son. She's not a um she's not a leading lady. And um and I'ma leave it at that. But going back to Tom Holland's Peter Parker, um, they need to make him smaller, they need to make him more independent. You would think after getting snapped that he would have had a little bit more understanding of what this thing is about. You would think that after being brought back and actually having to kill aliens in Endgame that he would have a better understanding of what this is about. But it seems like he's lost in his own hype. Uh, the Peter Tingle and all of these uh, stupid idiotic jokes that they have definitely takes away from the character. Um, no doubt uh, he missed five years, but um, he probably could just graduate. He's probably smart enough to just graduate right now and uh, leave those behind that left him behind. Um, you know, his girlfriend was snapped. His best friend was snapped, you know, conveniently. And that would have been a good time to have them stay. And when he comes back, they're like older than him. You know, they, they're in college now. They went on with their lives and now he has to be spider-man by himself but you know he needs his team he needs somebody to prop him up and i guess nobody's saying it everybody's talking about uh maybe ned led's becoming the hobgoblin and having the sinister six and seeing uh the andrew garfield and the toby Maguire spider-man in this new film but nobody's saying maybe just maybe i'd be like why did he have to go to another universe to see Uncle Ben alive, to tell him with great power comes great responsibility. To me, that's what it's all about. That's that's the embodiment of Spider-Man. You know, and he goes, you know, oh, he goes, oh, well, you know, you don't have to lie, Peter, and all that. You know what? Every superhero that keeps their secret identity, I guess, in essence, lies. You know what I'm saying? Some somebody would just say it's an omission of the truth. But you know what? If I ha if, if I can leap tall buildings in a single bound and and bench press dump trucks, you know what I'm saying? As as long as I'm helping people, if I don't tell you that's none of your business. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like um the guilt trip on pe he has enough guilt um really if they're going along with the story with Uncle Ben being dead and him not stopping a cat that's enough you know what i'm saying having a loved one that you care for and then something that you do in essence causes them to pass away is enough of a guilt trip for anybody all of this stuff with oh i don't even want to go into all of that i i ain't here to beat the trail up i'm just here to try to get an understanding of maybe i'm getting old maybe that's it you know what i'm saying maybe the world has moved on and now I'm the old man. Maybe I'm I'm seeing things, you know, old school style. And I don't think anything is wrong with that. I understand what they're trying to do with the character, but I believe they're kind of, it's almost like a character assassination of Spider-Man where they're trying to bring him into this broad, multiversal universe. And you can do that without losing the essence of what the character is. And uh, what is it, Civil War? He was in Civil War. He had his um, homecoming. 
He was in uh, Infinity War, Endgame, and he had Far From Home and Now uh, No Way Home. Was it six movies or so? And at one time, through all of this chaos, has he uttered the words, with great power comes great responsibility. And even with the passing of Stan Lee, you would have thought they would have, you know, put that in there to hold the character up. But it seems like they, you know, he needs Tony Stark and he needs money and he needs friends to prop him up. Well, really, that Spider-Man props up Spider-Man. And uh, call me old, call me blind, call me silly. I just don't understand how even the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man going back watching that trail. I'm like, yo, I still feel hyped up about that. That movie was dope, no matter how campy it was or whatever. And then I see Tom Holland, who is pretty much the most uh, technologically sound and the most uh, maybe the most powerful Spider-Man as as far as his power set is concerned. It's FM controlling the spider sense, of course, because everything needs an evolution now. But um, he still doesn't seem to have grasped who he is. And in Homecoming, it's like he knew it. He was the man, even though, you know, he was using like the different things in the suit and this and that. Like he was the man. And then it seemed like they're like um, leaving him back or like he can't progress properly like everybody else. And it's just, oh, well, a new suit and a new suit and a new suit instead of, okay, learn from that. Uh, get better. Don't just rely on your technology. Oh, I need a new suit. You know what I'm saying? I need to put some more hippity hop into it and then I can do this and then I can do that. How about using the powers that you already have? You know what I'm saying? And I and I said it in my review of the uh, trailer. I was like, cry, baby, cry, baby. Stick your head in gravy. It's like, come on. Grow up, dog. You know what I'm saying? How many people have to die? How many people have to sacrifice themselves before Tom Holland's Spider-Man grows up? I mean, I got tons of comic books sitting here that I'm surrounded with right now and I just really don't understand it and th the fact that you know Kevin Feige has done the impossible those first 10 years of Marvel no doubt there'll probably be nothing like it ever again but with great power I'm gonna keep saying it with great power comes great responsibility that's that's what helps Spider-Man get through you know what I'm saying? When he's busted up and bleeding and down on his luck and the villains talking trash and getting ready to kill him. That that's what gets Spider-Man up to continue to fight another day. And it seems like they don't want him to get there. They don't want him to, to, to be all that he can be. Yeah, I'm old. And I'm and, and I'm bringing some of this oldness to the internet. So if only five people watch this, whatever, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep posting it until it gets some some watches, because we need to understand the value of real superheroes. We need to see that there is something to strive to, that everybody is not a hero, but those that are help lift us up. Help us be better. And if that uh, hero never really, really, truly becomes a hero, where does that leave us? You know what I'm saying? What do we strive to? What do we look to become? What do we reach for? If that uh, paragon doesn't shine, and I'm going to go into that in another video, but... um. I'm I'm really feeling some kind of way about this. I don't know. Somebody help me out. Maybe I'm just not seeing the truth behind the smoke and mirrors and the little Easter eggs they keep. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been on an Easter egg hunt in like 35 years, man. And it's like, I don't really understand like the hype. Maybe I'm lost. Maybe I'm just too old school. Y'all, y'all help me out, man. Sign off in the comments and let me know. Maybe I'm just not 
seeing what Sony and Marvel is trying to do. Maybe, maybe I'm not as big of a Spider-Man fan as I thought I was. You know what I mean? Maybe it's that. Oh, excuse me. Here, take a sip of water. But, um, that's my thoughts on this. Maybe I'm just, uh, you know, I got a grown daughter now. My youngest is nine. Got two teenage girls coming up. Maybe my view on life and our storytelling and everything like that is a bit different. And I got three daughters and a son, and my son is the youngest. And I guess my uh, my daughter that would, I guess, be around the age of Tom Holland's character, none of them, even my 13-year-old, they don't they don't act like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, they don't act like that. And I don't, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm a a, a writer of children's stories or anything like that, but just observing my own children. They don't they don't act like babies like that. And I think that's my biggest gripe. You know, he can go to 50 universes, ask his little superhero friends for help, have 50 different suits. But I'm going to end it with this, y'all. When Spider-Man was created, I don't own the book, but I do own various reprints of it and the facsimile. Proud of that. And Amazing Fantasy 15. Stan Lee made it part of his core, part of his origin. Now with great power comes great responsibility. I'm preaching now. <laughs> the gospel of Spider-Man, son. And that's in um and this can't continue to be, man. It's like you know, everything that glitters ain't gold, and we just we just take it, y'all. I hope I have uh given y'all a little bit of understanding of why I did my review like that and what I think Peter Park is still dope Spider-Man is still dope you know what I mean it's just uh, <laughs> I look for more I look for better I look for greater that's just me people be like oh you got all of this why ain't you satisfied I'm like listen I've read a lot of books <laughs> I read a lot of comic books watched a lot of movies and um, some time man you want that thing to touch your heart when you watch it. You don't want to feel like you have wasted your time. You want to take away something with you that's in your mind, that's in your spirit. That's not just the spectacle. Because the spectacle dissipates. After the spectacle dissipates, you want to carry something out of that theater. You know what I'm saying? Away from the television that stays with you. You know what I mean? And that's the essence of storytelling. Within the spectacle, the fighting, the love triangles, and all of the drama, and the death, and destruction, and all of that, there needs to be something that you carry away with you. Something that makes you laugh. Something that makes you sing. Something that makes you cry. Something that makes you hope. You know what I mean? So that's it for now, man. I think I might do some of this some more. Just get some of this stuff off my chest and share it with y'all because somebody needs to know um, what a hero really is and that there still are heroes. All right, people. I will see y'all soon. And as always, as always, be great and do great. Peace.